uh, a man can carry a certain um, trait inside of him and is cancerous, and he can actually not actually give that to the woman. I would advise any woman that's getting involved in a relationship with a man to make, to, um, both of them should uh, get, get tested. Just to make sure, because there's things that can harbor um, inside of both parties that can come out later on. Um, I've heard of situations where a brother was about to constantly in a marriage with uh, a potential second Isha, and come to find out that that woman, can we keep it up? There was something that she had that it would come up maybe this month, but the next month she would be clean, and then it would flare up again the next month, and there was no cure for it. But he was just about to consummate that marriage with her. My argument again is that this betrothal period and our relationships with one another is very, very serious. Meaning now is that um, when we get involved in all these other different idolatries, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, whatever it is, this changes your psyche. So when now when, when you're having intercourse, whatever energy or whatever that's in your head is going to be released inside of the Isha. If that Ish is angry, upset, don't like you, whatever the case like that might be, and he lays down and has sex with you and sperm his energy, guess what's going to happen? He just released negative energy inside of you. This is what he just did. I would tell anybody, if you're upset with your Isha, don't have intercourse with her. If the Isha is angry with you, don't, don't, don't have in, um, intercourse with her. Because that umbilical cord is so important. If that Isha has problems and issues and she doesn't like you and, all, and everything like that, the baby is feeding through this umbilical cord. She can actually train or teach this child now to hate you. Because everybody knows now, when a woman is pregnant, that is a very important time in her life. She can actually program that baby, okay, while she's pregnant, just with the umbilical cord. Because she's picking, that baby picks up everything. Every single thing. I'm here to share with everybody, everything is based upon energy. Everything. We are energy beings. We're all interconnected. All of us. You ever been with your significant other? I mean, your, your Isha and things like that? You just feel that energy. But well, what's going on? Well, baby, you know what? I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the very same thing. You know what? Hey, baby, you know what? I was thinking about, I know I wanted lamb chops for dinner. You know what? I was thinking the same thing, and I knew that you wanted lamb chops. I made lamb chops for dinner tonight. You're connected. Connected. It's, I mean, and this is when um, I talked uh, some time ago is that when Adam left the garden, there's a lot of things that he, he, he lost. He lost um, mental uh, telepathy, clairvoyance, um, intuition, all these things. Because right now, the only way that we're able to communicate with one another is on nerve endings, and that's primitive. We work on what they call five senses, but it's actually only one sense, which is nerve endings. Everything operates on nerve endings. But there was a time, because even the Mashiach said, I perceived their thoughts before they, while they was actually, while they were thinking it, the Mashiach perceived their thoughts. So when you're connected, spiritually connected, we don't have to verbally talk. Just like you and your Isha. You can communicate with your Isha, okay, without verbally talking to her if you were in the room and you need and you wanted to leave. It's time to go. You should be so spiritually connected to your Isha by just looking at her and you can communicate with her because you're following Torah and she will say, listen, you know what? It's time for us to go. And she can close that conversation that she's having and you and her can leave out together. That's the type of spiritual connection that we must be under. That's how the body works. 
Let's pull some more to this, right? Because we've got to get to this data, this, uh, this data situation here. Um, now, I'm going to read from the book of Josephus, page 33. Page 33 in the book of Josephus, this is the complete works of Josephus. Watch this, how virginity is so, so important. Uh, what did I do? Uh, I have here uh, 16 chapter. Watch how this watch how interesting this gets. Okay, here we go. Mr. Cobb. I'm gonna read chapter 17, the second verse. I'm gonna read down a little bit. Which, which one did you read? Um, complete chapter 16. Iniquity of the Jews. I don't know how it's listed in your book, but mine has how Isaac took Rebecca to wife. That's the complete uh, works, right? Right, this is what that we have right. back in the day. Yes. I don't know how that might be listed. But it's chapter 16, Iniquity of the Jews, Book 1, if that helps any. Watch how deep this is. Uh, please pay attention to this. I'm not trying to hold you up, but listen, there's, it, there's a lot that's going on here with, with, with Dina. What, what chapter? Chapter 16. And the reason why I'm going to make this very, very personal this time, I'm going to tell you when it's not personal, I'm going to tell you when it is personal. Right now, this is personal, and the reason why it's personal, because I believe that I can do this, because uh, I've known I came for over 20 years. But this is to be applied to everybody. But watch how this reads. With this intention, he, which is Eliezer, went to the well and desired the maidens to give him some water to drink. Because remember, Eliezer is looking for uh, a bride. But, but he's not looking for the bride, but he's looking for Rebecca because Isaac, uh, excuse me, Abraham and Eliezer made this pact that they needed to get Isaac uh, and Esau a wife. But watch how this goes. But while the others refused for, um, on pretense that they wanted it all at home, this is directed towards everybody, but again, Zacchaeus and his Esau. Watch how this works. Only one only of the company rebuked them, which is going to be Rebecca, for their peevish behaviors toward the stranger, which was Eliezer, and said, What is there that you that you would never communicate to anybody who had not so much as given the man some water, which is Eliezer? She then offered him, Eliezer, water in an obligating manner. And now he began to hope that his grand affair would succeed. But desiring still to know the truth, he communed, communed her for her generosity and good nature, that she did not scruple to afford a, a sufficiency of water to those who wanted it, though it cost her some pains to draw it. This is the characteristics of Rebecca. And asked who her parents were, this is what Eliezer did, and wished them joy of such a daughter. Wow, you have a real good daughter. Now watch this. Mayest thou be expoused, said he, to their satisfaction and to the family of the agreeable husband. An agreeable husband now, the man must be agreeable and bring him legitimate children, nor did she disdain to satisfy his inquiries, but told him her family, they said, they, they says she, call me Rebecca, my father was Bethel, but he is dead. Watch this. And Laban is my brother, and together with my mother, takes care of all our family affairs, and is the guardian of my virginity. You see what just happened here? The responsibility, what I'm trying to share, intercourse is very, very responsible. And those of us, all right, that are men, and women here, we have children. It is our responsibility as parents to, to protect the virginity of our daughters. That's, good. That's our responsibility. You don't want your daughters, okay, being and marrying any type of bum out here in the streets. You don't want that. It is your responsibility. I don't really 
and yours. If she don't like it, tough. That's Hebrew culture, tough. That's mommy and daddy's situation, but in this particular situation here now, Rebecca's father was dead. So now I'm going, because everybody has to be under, under, under a covering. Remember I said this before? Every woman has to be under a covering, and some women believe that, listen, I can do whatever the hell it is that I want to do. I don't need a covering. I don't need a man and all this stuff like that, and you don't tell blah, blah, blah. Not according to Hebrew culture. Not according to Hebrew culture. When that woman leaves the mother, the father in the mother's house, she goes to another covering immediately. She don't say, well, listen, you know what, I want to get my apartment on my own and see how life is, and I want to do this and do that and blah, blah, blah. Not Hebrew culture. Uh -uh. The ideas in the way that we think here in America is not Hebrew culture. You're going to have yourself a problem. You're supposed to protect your daughter's virginity. That's your responsibility. We don't want our daughters to be whores. We just read all those scriptures about whores and how important virginity is. We, read, we heard the music now about virginity, about this woman, she's on her way to the morgue because she's caught sexually transmitted diseases. And the only thing that she was um, happy about was the pleasures of this world. Cars, money, fingernails getting done, houses, those were her joys. A temporary pleasure brought this woman now because she's having sex with all these different men. One man can't satisfy her, one man does her nails, one man buys her a house, the next man does her hair. Whores. It's your responsibility to check her identity and protect it. Um, let's now go to the topic. You, you had a question. No, you answered. I was asked, uh, what was the angel of that? So uh, you were saying that it's until. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. The father, yeah, that's it. You're in daddy's house. I mean, I can't do what I need. In order for me to stay in the father's house, I have to follow the father's rules. You know, uh, if I don't want to follow the father's rules, um, you're no longer in my covenant. And, it, and as hard as it might be, then whatever happens to you happens to you. Because, I mean, the rules have to be followed. And so when we didn't follow the rules of the house, whatever happens to you, happens to you. Because I'm going to let you know, when you're no longer under my covering, the curses now are going to come upon you. But as long as you're in my house, you receive the blessings. Yeah. Exactly. And so we have the father, the, the father um, Yahuwah, working through um, the, um, the, the groom, the Mashiach, always protecting the virginity of the nation of Yasharal, both men and women. Men can't be whores, women can't be whores. You're not supposed to be sleeping around with a whole bunch of women. The woman is not supposed to be sleeping around with a whole bunch of men. The father is not partial in, in the things that he's saying. But uh, let's get to the meat. This book right here, Mr. Picard, is, is, this is my baby right here. The Septuagint with the Apocrypha, this is the Brenton's um, edition, where it has both the, um, the English and the Greek. English on one side, the Greek on the other, that way you can do the comparison. I'm going to be reading from the Sefer, and I have the, um, where's the book at? The um, Samaritan, just in front of you. Oh, okay. I'm going to be reading from the Israelite um, Israel Samaritan version of the Torah. Um, I'm not too much of a big fan on the uh, on, on, on the Masoretic text. Dana, let's get to it. Um, I have the 34th verse. Is that you get the 34th verse also? Because I'm reading it from a different book. I'm, I'm, I'm starting with I'm, I'm beginning the story with, with, with Dana and Dana, the daughter of the Leah. Mine starts with the 34th chapter. I saw some that had like the 33rd chapter. This is the Lord. What book are you in? Um, you know what I do? Uh, I'll read it from the book of Joshua. That's what I do. I'll read it from the book of Joshua. I do it that way. Uh, 34. Verse 1 says, And Dana, the daughter of Leah, 
which he bore into Yaakov. Which chapter, Maury? Uh, excuse me, verse 1. Chapter? Chapter 34, excuse me. Chapter 34. Yes. It says, And Dana, the daughter of Leah, which she bore into Yaakov, went to see the daughters of the land. Everybody has it, right? No? What, what, what's some of the things that you have? Well, I'm, I, I didn't get the chapter 34. Chapter 24? 34. Oh, no, that's 34. What verse? Verse 1. No, okay. In the book of Yasha. Y'all don't have that chapter 30, 34. Well, we got 34, but it, it says in verse the number, 1 doesn't say that. Yeah, and the number of all the males that were circumcised was 600. Oh, no, I'm reading from the Sefer. Oh. Uh, I'm reading from the Sefer. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what it says in the Sefer. That's what it says in the Sefer. Right. Um, I have a Sefer. I did bring my. Check 30, check 30, 35. Just to make sure we get the big public image. That's what I'm saying. My bad, Mr. Carr. Uh, let's see here. Especially if they don't get the book on the absolute show. Okay, so he said chapter 34. Chapter 34 in the Sephir, right? Right. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Say verse 1. It depends on how the Sephir has it. It should. The Sephir is different. No, it's a fair, you have a fair score of $21.99. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said to everybody, a free one, if they didn't want to buy it. Right. It, didn't want to buy it. it should match. Once you find out what chapter is actually in, you can just yeah, turn to it's it. It's 33 and 7. It's 33? 33 and 7? No, 33. It's the start of the item. 33. Okay. Uh, yeah. It begins with what chapter? 33. 33. 33. 33. 33. Okay. Verse six. Verse, six. verse 6, right. Okay, gotcha. I'm here. Right. Okay. Uh, verse 6, 33, verse 6. It says, And Indina, or Dinah, the daughter of Yaakov, also went along with them, and saw the daughters of the city, and they remained there because these daughters because before these daughters, while as all the people of the city were standing by them to behold their rejoicing, and all the and all the great people of the city were there. When you read that same passage in the Israelite Samaritan version, we have watch how it changes a little bit here. And every little change means a lot. Means a lot. In a Samaritan, uh, it's like Samaritan text that says, And Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Yaakov, went out to be seen by the girls of the land. Watch this again. And Dina, the daughter of Leah, whom she had born to Yaakov, went out to be seen by the girls of the land. When it says to be seen by the girls of the land, it's going to share with us that there was something that these girls were doing. They were dancing and they were, were rejoicing. The activity that they were doing, Dana also did the same thing. Watch how this goes. Okay, I'm going to do this here because this is, this is uh, a little bit different. Uh, in Shechem, in, she in Shechem, the son of Hamor, the prince of the land, was also standing there to see them. And Shechem beheld Dinah. Wow. Do not die. Okay. You just want to continue. Hold on a second. 